Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be reviewing this 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter by WZRELB. Uh, it's a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 6000 watt surge and it'll take energy from say a battery bank and convert that from 12 volts into 120 volts AC power uh, that you'd find in your house uh, basically at any outlet. So that's what it's used for and you can run appliances and all that kind of stuff off batteries uh, which is very very cool. Now I actually had the previous model of this 3000 watt inverter in a video I did years ago and I've been using it a lot. I've used it for solar setups, I used it for a long time in my water pump room to run my water pump and a water pump takes a really big surge load and it did great and it's still running. I still have it and it's still running so I'm excited to try this one out. They sent me this new version for free to try out and uh, I said absolutely and we're gonna put it through the test see if we can get it up to you know breakdown point by pu uh, pushing a lot of stuff through it and we'll see how it does so let's get into the unboxing and the features and all that good stuff and I'll let you know what I think right after that all right so looking in the box here not really too much to this they have the wires that they send with you which are a little small in my opinion you got two positives two negatives you're supposed to connect together then you have your manual two terminal caps and then you have an extra set of fuses in case you actually accidentally hook up your battery uh, with reverse polarity it'll blow the fuses but at least they give you some to replace it and you'd be back on the road then you have the inverter itself which is wrapped in plastic and uh, the packaging all seems pretty good I think it's gonna get to you just fine now as you can see up top you do have a display it's gonna show the battery voltage on the top and the AC output current voltage on the bottom and two USB ports both rated for 2.4 amps each now um, this does this is for 12 volts so most battery types pretty much anything is going to put out 12 volts and it it's going to convert that to 120 volts ac it does have a low shutoff current that is at 9 to 10 volts and it has an over voltage shutdown at 15.5 volts as well now as you can see here, they list the power outlet is rated for 20 amps. So if you take 20 and times that by 120 volts AC, you're gonna get 2,400 watts. So that's as much as you'd wanna run out of the outlet directly is 2,400 watts. If you wanna run anything that's 3,000 watts, you would wanna use the hardware connection side over here, which is rated at 25 amps. 25 amps times 120 volts is 3,000 watts. So that's what you would use for the really big stuff. Or you could split it up, maybe hardwire in, say, um, a heater to the hardwire side, and then you keep the plugs uh, for the remaining uh, wattage that you want to use, just plugging the occasional thing in, and kind of split it up that way, and you're going to have better luck than trying to run everything through the AC outlet, uh, which is only rated for 2,400 watts. So let's get right into hooking this guy up and put it to the test. And for those of you that want to see inside, for all of us technical folks out there, I will do just a slow pass over from the top so you can kind of get a look at the way things are wired, the size of the capacitors and stuff like that. If you're into that kind of thing, I really wouldn't know what to tell you as far as how this is actually built. But it does give you a glimpse inside if you are a tech-minded person. So now we're going to go and hook this guy up. We're not going to be using the wires that came with it. We're going to be using these two-gauge uh, cables that I have. And even that's going to be too small for a 3,000-watt test. You'd want to be using something like 3 aught. Those are really big wires if you're going to be pulling 3,000 watts out of this guy. Um, but I'm going to stick with the two gauges just for the sake of this experiment. So I'm going to be wiring both of these batteries in parallel. So you got negative to negative. And then over here we're going to do positive to positive. Um, and that's going to keep the voltage the same on the batteries, but use both of their power sources so you have more amperage and amp hours to use. Um, and then we're going to run the positive on that end battery over to the inverter. We're going to connect the positive first. You're going to want to take off the nut, the lock washer, and the washer. And uh, make sure that you get both of those off because I actually forgot to take the little tiny washer off. And if you leave that in between your cable and uh, the terminal, it's going to heat up that washer because all that power has to pass through. So make sure it's the direct connection to the terminal, then the washer, then the lock washer, then the nut, and you'll be good to go. Now, when you connect your negative side here, we're going to go ahead and get this nice and tight. When you do connect your negative terminal, there, there will be a spark, and that's natural. That's just the power kind of flowing into the unit to power up the capacitors and everything. It's going to spark every time. Don't let it startle you. And then we're going to put that against the uh, terminal, and then a washer, lock washer, then the nut, tighten it down, and we're good to go. Now we're going to plug in my uh, testing apparatus over here, which is this plug and that's going to plug directly into uh, my testing apparatus, which I will show you now. Okay, so here's the setup. We have two line energy lithium iron phosphate batteries that are fully charged. We have those connected in parallel. 
going over to the 3000 watt inverter. And then on this side, I actually have this plugged into that yellow plug right there that leads up to this guy right there. And the reason I'm gonna do it this way is because this is the only way I can really measure that much current because this plug is actually connected to this readout right here. And that's able to handle much larger currents. And so that will give us an accurate, an accurate reading um, as opposed to say a watt meter, like the one over there that would top out at 1500 watts and then just destroy itself after that. So that's how we'll measure that amount of current and we will see how we do here. So that yellow plug goes up to this, this guy right here and anything plugged into here is gonna be running off of the inverter. And that will measure the current right up there on that guy. So to demonstrate when I turn this guy on, should kick on that little guy over there. Now that we have power, and this will be what we use for most of our readings as far as the power that's actually uh, traveling through the system and the unit. Okay, so we have a phone recording our gauge, GoPro covering us from above, and we have this Bornado 1500 watt heater and this heat gun plugged in right here, which is directly plugged into the inverter. So, as soon as we start uh, turning these guys on, we will see that on the readout. Let's try the Vornado first. This is 12.4, 117, 18 volts. Okay. Our little display it says 1.4 kilowatts, so 1400 watts there. And we're running just fine. So let's go ahead and just uh, knock this all the way up and see how we do. I'm gonna try on low, I believe, first. And we're pulling 2000 watts, uh, 2100. Now we're going to go for high. Okay. It looks like we were pulling about 2600 watts, which is pretty close. Okay, I'm going to switch to voice over here so we don't have to listen to all of that noise. If you look at the display, we're running at 114 volts, which is fine. Anything between, uh, you know, basically 100 and eight and 120 is completely acceptable. And we're also running uh, 2,570 watts at 22.62 amps. So that's fine for that outlet. But now we're actually gonna knock it up with another heater on low. And now you can see it really goes up to 2,870 watts. I'm sorry, 2,000, yeah, 870 watts. So, but that did jump up our amps. If you look on the top right, that's 26.44, which is over the 25 amps rated for that plug. And we have dropped down to 108 volts uh, for the AC voltage, which is still well within tolerance limits for just about anything in your house. So that's doing just fine. But this is definitely pushing the outlet over what it was intended to do. And so we're gonna let that run for a little while and see if and when it does indeed trip its uh, protection circuit. Uh, because we're overloading that single outlet. If you wanted to run more than this, you'd have to use the hardwire side of the inverter. And so basically what we're gonna do is just kind of see how it does, keep going. You can see there that we're currently at 11.3 volts on the batteries and we're at 107, yep, 107 volts, 108 volts on the uh, AC output, which is still totally fine, even though the voltage of the batteries is a little bit low. Um, but we're pulling 26.3 amps and 2,840 watts. We'll see how long that is able to run. And as it turns out, as we approach, um, I think it's about six minutes and 30 seconds, uh, this guy is gonna go ahead and shut down on us. And so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the audio so you can actually hear it turn off. And we will go from there. See if it kicks back on and the protection circuit worked correctly. Oh. So as you can see, we were pushing it too hard at 26 amps and it did finally shut down. Let's see how the protection circuit worked. 
And so after about like a three minute cool down, I kicked it back on and sure enough it is it is working again. You can see we can turn the Vornado on. So if you're gonna run 3000 watts, don't do it through one single plug. I would use these guys or at least spread it out between the two. And even then I'm not sure how this plug is wired. If it's uh, wired to each individual plug or if it's just one receptacle. But for really big loads, you're probably gonna to wanna to use this guy over here. But she is still functioning, so no damage done. There you go. And while it was running, I also did ch check the temperature on the unit itself, which was staying relatively cool at 80, but my cables were definitely heating up at 135 degrees because like I said, you really need bigger cables if you're gonna be pushing this kind of current through it for very long. All right, so there you go. It actually did really, really well considering that I plugged everything into that one AC outlet, which is only rated for 20 amps. and We we're pushing 26 amps through it for six minutes, 30 seconds before the protection circuit turned it off. And after three minutes, it was just fine. No damage done. So that's very impressive. If you're going to be running 3000 watts through this thing, you really want to use the hardware connection uh, using some pretty serious Romex to go to your appliances. Um, but at the same time, guys, if something's rated for 3000 watts, you don't want to be pushing 3000 watts continuous through this thing all the time, because when you max out any electronics, it's not going to last you as long. So if you need to run 3000 watts sustainably, I would suggest going much higher than that to at least 5000 watt inverter. And that way you're not pushing it to its absolute maximum capacity all the time. But this thing is really great for running a lot of stuff. Um, my house is all LEDs and small appliances and stuff, and it usually doesn't take more than 1500 to 2000 watts to run it until those, you know, the well pumps kick on and everything's on at the same time. But um, this will handle a lot of things. Microwave, no problem. Window unit air conditioner, no problem. Uh, blenders, coffee makers, stuff like that. Even at the same time, you could run a microwave and a, a coffee maker and stuff like that at the same time, um, which is very, very impressive. And check the description down below. If anything ever goes wrong with it, I, I try and update my description. Uh, to let you know how long it lasted and if I ever had any problems after this video was released. So make sure you check the description. Also, if you're interested in one of these, I have the, my Amazon affiliate link down below that'll take you straight over to it. But I'm pretty impressed. It did really well. I like the addition of the two 2.4 uh, amp USB connections. That's just always handy to have, especially if you're a van lifer in an RV or anything like that. Always good to have extra connections. And um, it has a ton of protections built into it. So I mean, reverse polarity is gonna blow the fuses. You have to change those, but at least the protection's there. Um, all kinds of stuff over temperature, low current, high current, etc. So it's really well protected. Both of mine have been working great so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it if this is in your wheelhouse. Um, I hope this video helped you out and now you know if it's right for you. So um, I think that about covers it. And again, um, I would definitely go with bigger cables than what they provide. I use two gauge cables in the test, as I mentioned, and you're gonna to wanna to go up to like three aught cables uh, minimum if you're gonna be pushing 3000 watts for any length of time through this thing. But pretty impressive. I like it. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please like, share, subscribe. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.